So let's uh, let's come before our Lord, shall we? We're going to uh, uh, hear a couple of verses here from the well-known Psalm, Psalm 100. And, uh, years ago, in some churches, it was sung nearly every Lord's Day to start off. But anyhow, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord Himself is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of his pasture. Let's pray. But Lord, as we come before you this day, and it is really encouraging to know that you are our great shepherd. And we come into your presence, O Lord God, to be guided and nurtured and fed by you, O Lord. Thank you for this time, this time of worship. Thank you for this time we can gather in your holy name, O Lord, that we can come before you, the great I Am. And that we can exalt and praise and honour you, the living God, the eternal God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that you made this all possible for us to be, O oh Lord, brought back into your presence, to be reconciled to you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that amazing uh, sacrifice on Calvary's tree, where Jesus went to that cruel, cruel cross and there he paid the penalty for our sins. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we would pray, Father God, as we come before you this day, that if there is anything that we have done to offend you and grieve your Holy Spirit, O oh Father God, forgive us, I pray. Help us, O oh Father, to be those who would walk in your ways and be mindful that, that when we sin we are to uh, confess of our sins. For you are faithful and you are righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, for those who have never repented and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, call is there for all to hear, repent and believe. And I pray, Father God, that it might be true of those who have not repented. But for each one of us now, Father God, as we come before you, thank you for your word, thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence for those who are in Christ, that we may come before you and worship you in spirit and in truth. So guide us, give us knowledge and understanding more of the things of yourself. Accept our worship, O Lord, as we come into your presence. Father God, we may truly worship you. Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to uh, stand and sing that uh, lovely hymn of praise. Lord, as the day begins, may you.
the meaning of words have an interesting origin. And uh, today in our passage we'll be looking at, there is such a word that is used in relation to uh, how we are to be with the Lord and we are to be those who are blameless and innocent or sincere. It tells us that in Philippians chapter 2 verse 15. And so the word sincere, where does it come from? Anybody? Know? Yes? It comes from the Latin. It comes Cine, from the Latin. Sine series without wax. That's exactly right. And you know why it's called without wax? Because they used to doctor up marble to make it. That's exactly right. So when they used to make these idols or whatever, they'd stick in the front of their houses, you know, those magnificent statues, whatever. And so your sculpture will be working away and every so often a crack might form. And so <laughs> they would get busy mixing wax with the dust and they would try to put it in to disguise the crack because no one want a cracked statue. <laughs> and they would put it there, but the trouble is if it got hot weather the wax would melt and it would ooze out and show the fault. So when they would buy their statues, what they would do is they would get an expert in to look over them. And what would happen then is, is that they would see if there was anything that was out of place or whether or not you would say it was sincere, genuine. How about that? Okay, so when you think of us being like those who are sincere, genuine, all right, it means that we are to be those who strive to be without fault, genuine in the Lord Jesus Christ, and not to be found out as those who are, well, bearing, bearing those faults in our life that would be revealed when the heat is on, so to speak. And so our passage today tells us that we are to be those who are blameless, those who are innocent. And it's not so easy, but just for the record, for the young and old, just remember the word sincere, and that it is, uh, as Ian rightly said, is without wax, without the filling that shouldn't be there. We will pray. Give thanks to God for the way he has dealt with our life, Lord. It is a wonderful thing to know that uh, you have been so gracious to us, and for all the Lord Jesus has done for us. But Father, we would be prayerful at the same time that those faults in our life would sometimes become evident or you would help us to strive to be a faithful people to put those things away and by the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit and your word O oh Father that you would teach us and guide us to be people who would walk in your ways and to be faithful to you in all of our life so we praise you and we give glory to you for both young and old O oh Lord that we might walk in your ways in the name of Jesus our Lord Amen and we're going to sing 449, therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. Jesus at your word. 
And I've asked Paul if he would lead us in our readings from Proverbs and also from Philippians. Thanks, Paul. first reading of the morning will be from Proverbs 16, verse 25 to 33. Hear now the word of the Lord. There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. A worker's appetite works for him, for his mouth urges him on. A vile man digs up evil and the words on his lips are like scorching fire. A perverse man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close companions. A man of violence entices his neighbour and leads him in a way that is not good. He who winks his eyes does so to devise perverse things. He who compresses his lips brings evil to pass. Grey hair is a crown of beauty, it is found in the way of righteousness. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his own spirit than he who captures the city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every judgment is from Yahweh. I ask now that you turn to Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 14 through to 18. Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you will be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so in the day of Christ I will have reason to boast because I did not run in vain nor labour in vain. For even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. And you also rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. May the Lord bless us with this reading. Indeed. Thank you, Paul. We shall pray. Let's come for our Lord and... Um, We'll have a moment of silence uh, to start with and then I will continue and this prayer is a prayer of intercession and supplication so we're mindful of others in their own needs. So let's just humbly come before the Lord in prayer uh, and then um, yeah, I'll continue. Lord, it's a great privilege to come into your great throne of grace and to bring our prayers before you. And I pray that you would hear our silent prayers, the prayers of our heart, and that you would answer in accordance with your own holy will and purpose, O oh Father, for each one here today. And Father, we, we are mindful of all that goes on around in the world, around us, and we hear it, news is just on the moment, all the time. We have images of wars and horrors and all kinds of things. A world that has been affected by the sin of mankind and continues to be so. It is sad, it's tragic, but this is the, this is the way of, uh, of sinful man. This is the way of this world. And so, Father God, it is with this thought in our mind that we would give you thanks and praise, first of all, for the good gospel message that has gone out the good news of the Lord Jesus has gone out and touched the hearts and the minds of many folk throughout this world, the transformed lives who, who, uh, who rejoice in you and who uh, worship you as they should, O oh Father God, and walk in your ways. And regardless of where they may be, O oh Father God, we pray particularly, first of all, today for the persecuted church, and uh, we know that in many nations persecution is rife and harsh and very cruel. 
and uh, sometimes ends in the, the death, the martyr of your, of your people. But at the same time, Father God, that there is rejoicing even in that because uh, they have gone to be with you, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Today, particularly, Father God, I would pray for the work that is going on in those uh, nations that are particularly run by the Hindus. And I would pray, Father God, for that work, for uh, it is a, a religion which is um, blinded from the truth. And I pray for those who would come away from it, who would hear the good news of the Lord Jesus and receive the Lord Jesus Christ and turn away from that, that false religion. I pray, Father God, then, that you would... Um, that you would work in those people's minds and keep them, keep them from the, uh, the evil one and the, the temptations to, to turn back or to backslide or to be, uh, um, become weak possibly in the face of great difficulty. And we uphold those people to you, Father God, and thank you for the work that continues in all of those areas. Lord, we do pray for our nation here and uh, we would dearly love to see more of a a consciousness in regards to the things of yourself, a, a nation that would uphold the laws of God, but it seems to be going the other way. It could be because, uh, Father God, that uh, these people have uh, deliberately hardened their hearts against the things of yourself. It may well be the fact that the church does not speak out enough, and we're too silent. But you know the full cause of mankind is, is that in this nation here, even here, Lord, where it started on many godly principles, even though the people were not necessarily godly, but that, Father God, people's hearts become hardened towards you. And so, Lord God, we do pray. We pray for the churches throughout this nation, firstly, that they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, turn their, their back on you, Father God, that they wouldn't uh, uh, seek the easy pathway, that they would stand firm on the, on the truth of God's word. And Lord, that we would be that light that is necessary in this world. We pray for our, our governments, federal, state and local, and for the leaders of government and those in opposition. They are accountable to you for how they treat the people and how they govern this nation. And we pray for the upcoming election, O oh Lord God. We pray particularly that, uh, that you would bring about that which is according to your will. And uh, Lord God, that uh, there, would be, there would be Christians out there who are suitable to go into to government and that uh, you, may, uh, you may see that they are given favour. And so, Father God, all these things we pray, mindful that we live in this world, thank you for your provision for us. But Lord God, we thank you too that we may be a living witness for the Lord Jesus Christ in what we do as well. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you would continue to look over each one and help us to be those people, O oh, Father God, who would be faithful in walking in your ways and not to be troubled by the things of this world, but to have peace in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that you are the sovereign God, God over all things, and that uh, no matter what man may do, O oh Lord, our trust is in you, and our hope and our faith is truly grounded in, uh, in your word and what the things you have promised to us. And so, Lord, hear all of our prayers. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll be waited upon for your gifts and tithes for the Lord's word. Thanks and praise for your wonderful provision for us each and every one.
we have this opportunity now of bringing our gifts and tithes and offerings to this ministry of yours, O Lord, and pray that you would take these things and use them in the work both here and abroad for your name's sake. And Lord, uh, we just uh, thank you too that uh, each day we might recognise that, that we are to serve you uh, and that this, this is part of our service, is part of the greater picture of how we are to walk in your ways. And so Lord, we just uh, commend ourselves into your hands also and help, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing once again from our hymns of praise. Here, yes, rejoice, 500, no, 253, the other way around. Blessed Jesus, at your word, we have gathered now to hear.